Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Dungan. I'm the director of Whitewater Career Center. We would like to welcome you to the second episode of Discover WCCC. Today we have our guest, Mr. Rick Beaver, who is our precision machine technology instructor, and student Ethan Fowler, a Connersville High School precision machining one student. Today we will highlight several um, ideas and interests that excite our youth about the precision machining technology program at the Career Center. We will also let viewers in on what's happening, where we're going, and what direction our program is taking for the future. At this time, we will begin by letting Mr. Rick Beaver introduce himself. Um, I'm Rick Beaver. I've been teaching at the Career Center for 19 years. I came up through industry ranks. and It's just something I always wanted to do. And um, I'm blessed to have great students this year. Thank you, Rick. And Mr. Ethan Fowler. Uh, my name is Ethan Fowler. I'm a first year student in the Precision Machine Technology class. And uh, this is something I've been wanting to do since about seventh grade. And, it's, and it, they're bringing it to pass and I can fulfill what, I, what I've always wanted to do. This is a unique opportunity for uh, students from all, all six of our area schools to be able to come in and work with business partners and industry partners that serve on our advisory committees and as well as just partners as far as sponsored donations um, and also help them find potential employees for their future needs. Rick, could you please describe your two-year program at the Career Center? Uh, yeah. Um, as a, when kids come in as a junior or now I have a few sophomores, um, they learn basic machining, um, from uh, speeds and feeds on setting up machine tools to metallurgy, heat treatment, composition steels, uh, safety, um, quality control, ISO 9001. We just finished a unit on Six Sigma. Um, and then while they're there the first year, they get um, six college credits from Vincennes University. Then the second year, we repeat some of the stuff on safety from the first year, but then we dive more into more complex setups, uh, CNC programming, and they earn more college credits from Vincennes University. They can also earn 15 college credits from Ivy Tech. Um, and then midway through the first semester to beginning of second semester, we have a co-op program. So if a student maintains a uh, B or higher average, misses less than five days of school in the semester, and have my recommendation, they come to my class one day of work and work in a machine shop four days a week. While they're earning, my highest paid student this year was 13 a quarter an hour. But while they're working, they're making money, they're earning their college credit and their high school credit. And then that opens a door when they graduate it's like a six month long interview on the co-op program. So then the employer knows what they get when the student graduates. That sounds like a fantastic opportunity. What can you tell us about the tools and equipment and machinery that you have in your lab classroom environment? We have most everything a modern machine shop would have. Um, we have Bridgeport mills, engine lathes, surface grinders, all the conventional tools. And then we have CAD CAM software, CNC simulation software, uh, Haas CNC Turning Center, uh, CNC Machining Center, two small CNC mills. So we can replicate what the students will do um, out in the workforce. Sounds great. Now you mentioned certifications and dual credits. How do those tie into the industry-based uh, partnerships that we have as well as future employment certifications and opportunities whether it be further schooling or apprenticeships or, or opportunities like that? Um, after they get their college credit they have the option of NIM certifications, National Institute for Metalworking Standards. And that's at the student's expense but it's for the first certification is less than a hundred dollars. They have to machine a part in my class we have a Met Tech committee that inspects the part for 100% to make sure it's the blueprint dimensions. And then they go online for a proctored test with NIMS. And they'll earn you know, cert certification from NIMS on bench work and planning is the first one. And then if they get that one and want to go on, there's 
I think, 21 different levels of NIMS certifications that the student can get. And how transferable is, are those certifications and dual credits? The dual credits are transferable to any school in Indiana, but my students are received, uh, as an example, they received nine credits from Vincennes, they ended up going to Ivy Tech. Ivy Tech, through Indiana's Crosswalk, honored those credits, as most universities will. That's great. So, for the average person, precision machining is fairly difficult to understand what it actually is. Can you give us a brief overview of what it actually is and what it entails? We're, we take from an uh, engineer's drawing, a blueprint, and we'll pick what material we have to use according to the blueprint. We'll process that work through the shop from when it's cut on the bandsaw to if it's lathe work, where it goes on the lathe, which operations are done first, to a milling machine, surface grinder, heat treat, maybe back to a surface grinder. But we process work all the way through. So it could be anything. It could be, um, I don't know, uh, U joint. So we take a print and go all through every aspect of making that to a finished product, including inspection. Um, it could be a company come, come in and say, we need a mold that's going to make the outside of this pen. An engineer would design that mold, and then we take it through and make every aspect of that mold to make that finished product. Very interesting. Um, what job opportunities are here in our local areas um, from, you know, Franklin County, Rush County, Wayne, Fayette, and Union? Well, in Connersville, I've lost count of how many machine shops we have. Um, it was said at one time we had more machine shops than we did churches. So it's going to be pretty, pretty close. Um, my students are employed from three or four shops in Connersville. We've got two shops we deal with in Richmond, A-House Tool and Engineering, and Nixon Tool. I currently have four students at Nixon Tool. Um, I have shops all the way to Cincinnati, Ohio for my Franklin County students. Um, sure Seal. Uh, thinking off the top of my head. Batesville. Um, Batesville Tool and Die. Batesville Tool yeah. and Die, Clipper Laboratories. Um, and there's numerous shops that contact me. They don't take my students because I don't have any students left. I have more job opportunities than I have students. And it's been like that for the last four or five years. Excellent. Um, what personal qualities are you looking for in your students? Um, I mean, we talk about employment skills and employability. What qualities are you looking for to become a machinist that need to couple with becoming a successful employee? I had a guidance counselor ask me the same question. And, you know, we need, it's nice to have math skills, problem-solving skills. Um, because a lot of times it's hard to troubleshoot, it's hard to imagine. But I told a guidance counselor one of the skills I look for is creativity. And the counselor's reply was, creativity to run machines? And I said, yeah, a lot of times you'll have a part come in, nobody knows how to run it. There's no way to hold the part. So you gotta be creative and think outside the box and just use your imagination on how you're gonna make this part work. Interesting. Ethan, what do you feel like the most difficult aspect of the class is for you currently? Probably the most difficult aspect of the class is, like he said, is coming, being creative and thinking of uh, fixtures to hold parts. Like, I've, I've been working on an engine at home, and uh, in the time left over after doing projects in class, we had to design a fixture to hold, to hold that part and to remachine it workable to use. So, kind of thinking outside the box. Sounds great. Mr. Beaver, uh, math is a huge concern. Um, state pathways and graduation requirements are, are dictating algebra two for the majority of our students in Indiana. Um, should students be scared of the math in your class? And if, if so or if not, um, how do you feel that the math is integral to what you're doing? We use math every day. And a lot of students, they come in and they're like, I'm not too, too sure I want to take a machine. I want to take machine shop because of math. So if a student struggles at math, I don't leave them behind. I'll pull up my chair right next to theirs, and we'll work out the problems together to where 
eventually they're confident enough to do it on their own. So is math more applied or is it more, uh, I, I guess, the way, should they be able to apply the math skills in a larger scale or do they get assistance through programming and things that help them and assist them in doing the math, I should say? All of the above. We have formulas we use every day. Um, students use their calculator and they have to figure speeds and feeds. Um, we have simulation software where when they start programming, if they punch the wrong numbers in, we can visually see it's the wrong numbers and the machine crashed before we actually get out and put a program in a machine. Sounds great. Ethan, are you uh, currently doing okay with the math, math aspects? Yeah, yeah, and if I have trouble, I just go to Mr. Beaver and he'll sit down with me. I remember one time we just, to read a thread, you've got to have wires and there's a formula for the wires and you get a perfect thread. And he sat down with me and went through it all and showed me how to read the machinist handbook and he's just there to help you. And his experience through Nixon Tool and these tool companies he's worked for, he, he's really, he knows what he's doing and he's a great teacher. Sounds great. What's a typical day like in the classroom for you, Mr. Beaver? Uh, our days vary. On Monday, we try and do our uh, scheduled book work for whatever lesson is that week. We have online curriculum called Tooling U. Um, instead of a textbook, we'll do our lesson online, and then we'll have a follow-up test online. And I like it better than a textbook because there's interactive exercises. Um, and it, it just helps the cognitive memory uh, remember when you go to take the test. And we'll try and do all that on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're in the shop. Friday, we'll take a test over what we learned for the week. And then the rest of Friday, we're in the shop again. What's your typical day like, Ethan? I know from a teacher and an administrator standpoint, we know what our typical days are. But right. what's, what's it like for a student? Well, for a student, we come in and Monday is usually the, the, hard, the harder day. If you would, you know, you kind of got to sit at the computer and read through the content. And I mean, it's not like too hard, but it's you got, you got to focus and pay attention so you can take your test and get certified. But the rest of the week, we're out in the shop doing real, we learned real how to be at work in a machine shop in the real world. And it just, it's really, I would recommend, like for, I'm sure that all the other careers do it, but I would recommend this program to anyone because you're doing what you will be doing in the real world. Okay, sounds great. Mr. Beaver, what are the projects you're uh, working on uh, in your program right now? My juniors, part of their uh, college credit for Vincennes University, they have to make a height gauge that she's on a surface plate. So they make every part of that and students finished it up and um, then they move on. They're making a fly cutter. It's a uh, type of cutter we use on a milling machine. They made a hammer with replaceable inserts. And then as time dictates, if my kids go real fast, we get more projects done that year. My juniors are flying through everything, some good looking projects. My seniors have to make a vice for their Vincennes University credit. Um, we should have brought a vice today, but it's a pretty neat project. They're holding half thousands tolerance um, they're grinding stuff square within a thousandths and four inches. Uh, some close tolerance. Students have learned a lot on them. Sounds great. Uh, what are some past projects you're working on, or you have worked on, uh, that you may continue to, to do? Again, I know you run some parts for various machine yeah, we've, uh, companies. We've done some outside work, baseball tool and die. We've done, um, last two years, we've made quite a bit of money running parts for Nixon Tool Company, die ring inserts that are used in the pet food industry. Um, students are holding tight tolerances on them. Tight tolerances for students. Um, thousands parallelism on some eight inches in diameter. We're holding five tenths on an outside diameter and five ten thousandths on an inside diameter. So the students are learning quite a bit about tolerance, how heat affects tolerance. Um, it's just an overall good experience for students because they're running actual parts for a shop, not just a project that the teacher assigns. So what type of project for pet food industry? Uh, what were those particular parts you're re referencing? It's a die ring insert. It goes in an extruder die and they squirt or feed pet food product, dog food, cat food, and it forms the shape of a uh, food. And then they have knives that cut it off. And 
we run these parts. Um, we did 150 the first year. And I was worried about my students getting 150 good parts because they paid for all the stock. We got 150. So the second time we ran it, they were confident in my students' work, and we ran 200. So now next time it might be 300. Sounds interesting. So there's a chance that the pet food that may be consumed by our area, yeah. pet owners could be actually Made cut with extruders from our precision machining. That's very yeah. interesting. Uh, what work opportunities do your students have? Um, as far as co-op, all the, the shops that's hired my students, take them in. It's sort of like a trial basis, but 99% of the students are hired full-time at the end of the co-op period when they graduate. Uh, all the businesses I deal with pay for 100% of the um, students' college. That will be at Ivy Tech or Purdue Richmond. Um, Batesville Tool and Die has Ivy Tech classes at their shop. They'll have an instructor come in. They set up a lab. It works pretty good. Um, Clipper Laboratories in Cincinnati, they pay for either a two-year associate's degree or a four-year degree in mechatronics through Cincinnati State. And then that's while they're working full-time. Sounds great. Ethan, where do you vision yourself uh, employment-wise maybe in a year and a half or so when you're graduated and away from the Career Center? Well, actually, uh, last summer I interned at Nixon Tool through the high school, so I didn't really have any prior experience in the machine shop, but uh, I have been um, invited to come back and work this summer, and hopefully I'll be able to work where uh, Mr. Beaver worked there actually for, I think, what, 11 years? He worked there for 11 years, and... Uh, I plan on working there and uh, hopefully t being able to take their apprenticeship program and get an associate's degree in college and maybe Ivy Tech or Purdue, wherever. So that's my. Sounds good. What can students do after they finish your programs? What are their avenues? From like the apprenticeship program to be a uh, Nixon tool, you're going to be a tool maker, CNC operator, programmer. You could go to a bigger place and work your way up through quality control. I've had uh, Josh Hamilton was one of my first students in 1999, and he's a plant manager of a machine shop in Cincinnati, Ohio. So he took his skills that he learned at the vocational school, now the career center, and has worked his way up through the ranks, and he's plant manager for an 80-man shop. So really, it's, you can go anywhere in industry. That's a great success story for sure. Most of your students, are they already placed, or do they typical have, typically have a hard time being placed? If they're a, a beer higher um, and meet co-op qualifications, they're co-op. If a student's going off to a four-year university and they're going to go out of state or move off to college, that kind of puts a hindrance on co-op opportunities. Because all my employers, they want people that's going to be there full time after they graduate. And it's not fair to the employers or the student just to work them as a co-op program and then have them leave. Because the companies are investing a lot of money in my students. Absolutely. Who should consider enrolling in your program? Anybody that's interested in manufacturing. Whether you want to be a mechanical engineer, a quality control engineer, process engineer, General machinist, CNC programmer, tool maker, mold maker, anything with manufacturing. Okay. Ethan, were you apprehensive uh, about being in this program initially? No. Um, the, the prior knowledge I had about the program, my brother had went through and took uh, the electricity class. And uh, he, right after high school, he was employed by Gaylor Electric and is currently working there. And it showed me how that I, I knew I would probably be able to go right into the workforce and get a job. and So so you're kind of a testimony, your yeah. family for the whole program, not just precision machining right. since your brother went through electricity. Right. That's, that's very good to know. Um, what advice would you give a student coming into this program? Um, choose a program that fits you and your interest. Um, don't take something that you're never going to use because it's kind of wasting the time of the the program, and I'm sure they're investing a lot of money. 
So just pick something that fits you and that you can use. Sounds great. Um, Mr. Beaver, what advice do you have for younger students who are considering this in the future? Uh, probably look at where they want to be, not right out of high school. Look at where you want to be 10 years down the road. How are you going to pay for college? If you want to be an engineer and you go through, you're taking all your math classes, don't overlook the career center because this can get your foot in the door to a machine shop that would, it, would help you attain your degree plus pay for it. I see too many students going to a four-year university. They graduate, they don't have a job, and they're $100,000 in debt. My students have a job right after high school. It take them a little longer to get their college credit because they're going to be working while they're going to school. But they're going to graduate and have a degree. They already have a job, and they have zero college debt. So they could be $100,000, $200,000 ahead of the student who just went to a four-year university and paid their way through their own way through. Okay. Here's my question for you. Females in our programs, um, that seems to be a, um, a hindrance. Of, at times, girls think that they don't want to go where all the boys are. What's your experience with the females in your programs regarding job placement and success in the precision machining industry? During my first 12 years teaching, I had a few girls take the program. Um, They'd move away um, or drop the program. It just wasn't for them. In 2013, I had a girl from Union County excel. She made my guys look bad. Her projects were awesome. We got her co-op job before she graduated. And in May, when she graduated, 2013, she's still at that job today. Um, the next year, I had a, another nice young lady took the program. She's at the same shop, so she's been there three years. I currently have uh, two girls in my class, and each one's got their strengths and weaknesses like any student. I've got a, a girl that just struggled with manual equipment, programming. She's knocking the guy's socks off. Um, I've got another girl that's 12th in her class at Franklin County, and she's putting the hurt on my other juniors academically. And it's really made the guys kind of do better in the class to see this little girl showing them up every day. That's good. Ethan, you feel like the ladies in your class are just as valuable of an asset? Because I've seen them both in action, and I know they are. But what, <laughs> do you feel comfortable, comfortable working with them? And yeah, I do. And it actually it makes me want to do better. And, uh, you know, it's competition. And uh, it, it would kind of help me to... Uh, do my best and absolutely absolutely so ladies uh if you ever have any doubts about your place in our programs we we want you um just as much as any other individual for sure um we're going to go ahead and move on to mr fowler here with a couple of questions and uh ethan what made you overall want to just enroll in this program what, what why was this your pick uh this was my pick because uh I had currently took some uh the project lead the way courses over at the high school connorsville high school and uh, it kind of got me interested in reading blueprints, holding tolerances. And I, I'd kind of thought about, you know, maybe, what about architect and, you know, just kind of stuff that was working with blueprints. But I kind of seen machining and how I can use that to, like, my interests, like working with cars and working with stuff like that. And I know I can use that later on. So that's kind of what sparked my interest. At this point, what have you learned in this program? I've learned how to run... Uh, most of the manual machines, uh, surface grinder, mill, lathe, uh, and we've did a lot on the laser cutter at CNC, but uh, it's mostly manual starting out, and we, we get the basics of speeds and feeds, and we, we learn how to just do the basics so we can advance and move on to CNC. And Sounds great. Um, what's your favorite part of the class? Favorite part of the class is working. I love working with my hands. I love uh, making parts and tolerance. When you see that perfect part, it's just, it just kind of brightens your day and, and makes your whole day go good. One of the things we pride ourselves on at the Career Center is treating students like adults and trying to replicate workforce environment. Do you feel that we do a good job of replicating what an actual 
environment for employment should represent absolutely uh, the career center absolutely because before i've i've been done with the part and me and mr beaver he'll talk to me man to man about future and he, he actually told me one day he said i'm not looking at you as like a student he said i'm looking at you you know five or six years down the road he said i want to do my best to put you in a place that will enhance and make you follow this career and better your, your your whole life. Absolutely. So what are you currently doing now? Right now I'm working on a, uh, it's a project, it's a, it's a vice stop, you put it on your vice and it helps your parts, if, if you're making multiple parts, putting a hole in them so you can put one part in, make the hole, take it out and put another one in without having to measure and go back through and it makes the process easier. Absolutely. Um, what are your plans after you finish up uh, at the Career Center and CHS and, and graduate? Uh, like I said, I, I think I'll try to work on and go to a machine shop and take their apprenticeship program and hopefully um, be able to receive my associate's degree in, in precision machining. And I'm thinking about after that, maybe going back and trying to get a degree in engineering. Okay. Cause what, what school are you, are you interested in? Um, I'm interested in, uh, I, I, I mean, I, Ivy Tech, Purdue maybe. I mean, I'm just kind of looking. Okay, that, that sounds great. Do you have any hobbies that go along with, with this occupation you're going to uh, pursue? I noticed you mentioned something about an engine earlier. Yeah, yeah, I, I love working with old classic cars. I've actually got a 74 Corvette I'm working on. And uh, I can see how I can use this. I can, I can use this to do stuff I like. And it's not just, it's not a drudge to go into school every day, go into the career center. I, I enjoy it. Like, it's my favorite part of the day, getting to go in and learn something I can use as a hobby or to make money. So that, I really enjoy it. What advice would you give to younger students? I, I'm saying anywhere from, you know, fifth grade to even, you know, our current sophomores who will maybe be coming next year. What advice would you give them regarding the program and just regarding uh, future outlooks on on what they need to prepare themselves for, for the real world. Uh, what I would probably tell the younger students is uh, once you get to the higher levels, take uh, Project Lead the Way. Um, it'll help you understand the basics of reading blueprints, which majorly helps you in the machine shop. And uh, just seek, seek what you want to do and know what you want to do because there's so many j opportunities at the Career Center. Mr. Beaver, what would you uh, offer to younger students? Uh, I know you're a grandpa. If you were going to talk to your grandson about some of these things, what would you say to him? A lot of kids, uh, they, they have an idea they want to build cars or they want to build homes. Um, and the machine shop gets overlooked. They need to come in, talk to a machinist, find out what's all involved, it's a career that just so often gets overlooked, but there's a drastic job shortage in this. The young kids need to think outside the box, um, not listen to everything that's on TV, because everybody that watches uh, every Saturday morning car show, they all want to professionally build race cars. <laughs> that's what I'd love to do too, but... Uh, if they take machine shop, they can always make race car parts. Yes, very good point. Um, one word to describe Ethan very briefly. Awesome. Ethan, one word to describe your program. It's the best. Awesome. Those are very good uh, descriptors. Uh, I'd like to thank you at this time for uh, joining us for our second episode of Discover WCCC. Students wanting to enroll for the 2018-19 school year, uh, feel free to contact your counselors uh, at school. Make sure you work through them so they can work through us to ensure enrollment opportunities um, and get the paperwork turned into them in a timely manner. Um, also, we'd like to say from the Career Center staff, thank you for support, and we will see you next time.